everyone see my screen? I can see it. Wonderful. Thanks so much for that nice introduction. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. It is raining slash snowing a little bit here in New York City, so it's very, very cold. So it's nice to be indoors, trading, talking, doing all the fun things that we do as traders. So I am going to talk to you today about how you can earn a living trading gaps. So I trade gaps. That is all that I do. I don't do anything else whatsoever at all. Now, I do trade gaps as options. And I also trade gaps as day trades. It really has to do with which one you prefer. My strategy is based on gaps no matter how I play it. So for example, some stocks, I trade the US stock market. Everything I do is in the US stock market, which is open from 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time. Some things make more sense to actually trade as an option. For example, something like Amazon or even like Tesla or Google, stocks that are very expensive, where they're very spready or very expensive, it makes more sense to trade them as options. But I do do both in some stocks. For example, the market, the QQQs, Boeing is another one we do a lot. I will do it as an option and a day trade as well. Now the market is falling today, the market gap down today. We'll look at the market live if we have time here at the end. So I'm going to start the presentation, but the market did gap down today and you could have shorted the market today out of the gate or you could have done a put, which is basically a put in an option. So I just having this up here, if people do have questions, you can you can feel free to just plop them in the room um, and I will see them as we go along. If you also have questions, you can, that's me, by the way, you can email me at Melissa at the stock or call me at 929 gap You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I try to put when I'm on television there. I am on Shutter TV at four o'clock today. Tomorrow I'm on Ameritrade and Friday morning I am on Newsmax if you watch Newsmax TV. So I'm talking about this whole week on television, the sell off in the market, COVID, what is happening? I heard the previous uh, speaker was discussing, you know, Europe and the shutdowns and this, that, and the other thing. New York City right now is in this weird place where we're not fully shut down, but a lot of businesses and a lot of offices have shut down. So it's not like a citywide shutdown, but a lot of companies, corporations have said, don't come into the office because of all the cases. So that is one of the reasons, again, why the market is falling in the last two days. So let's talk in general here about gaps. Why trade gaps? Well, gaps are something that happens on a regular basis in the market. So as an active trader, I'm an active trader, which means I'm looking for trades Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm always trying to find a move in something. Now, I prefer to do only one trade a day. That's really all you need to make money. But there are so many stocks and so many things that gap on any particular day. It's not hard to find something each and every day. So again, if you're looking to trade and be active, you've got to find something that sets up on a regular basis. That's very, very important. You also need results if you wanna make money trading. Again, we're talking about doing it for the whole year to do it as a job, to do it as a career. Well, you need to make money to do that, you need results. And I think a lot of people want to trade, they dream of trading, and they tend to start out with a very positive attitude, an optimistic attitude, and then they go negative. Why? Because they start out, they trade, they lose, and then they feel like, oh my God, this is impossible, I can't do it. Well, you've gotta find a strategy, that's number one, and two, then you have to have a strategy that gives you the results. The results, I mean, I don't trade penny stocks, I don't trade low float stocks, I don't trade things that have no volume. Very difficult to make money or make money on a consistent basis when you're doing stuff that hardly moves. Everyone's all into this, these Reddit chat rooms now and the whole Reddit phenomenon. I looked at GME the other day, which is what started that phenomenon at the beginning of 2021, if you remember all of that, going back now almost a year, the stock's falling. In fact, I didn't look at it today. I'm sure it's falling today because market's falling today, but so many people are trapped in that long. You can't do the same stock every day either, okay? So I do a different thing all the time, every single day. I never know what I'm gonna do until I get up in the morning and I see the gap. And again, I'm gonna explain to you and teach you here today what a gap is, all right? But you've gotta have results in order to do this for a living. Otherwise, how are you gonna pay your bills? You have to find a way to do it. So this was, uh, my assistant put this in here. I should have had him put a December in here as well. He did this uh, webinar for me a little couple days ago. This was the results for November. We had a big month. Now November was earning season. Earning season for first quarter 2022 begins when? After Martin Luther King Day. <coughs> so, we, so two weeks, basically two weeks from yesterday is Martin Luther King on the 17th of January, 18th, then we have earnings season that week. 
So earning season is a very, very productive and profitable time to trade the strategy that I do on gaps. We had 16 winners, four losers, two break-even trades, 22 trades in total, and an 82% win ratio. Now this was an advanced trader risk for these profits, meaning that the risk was about $2,700 per trade, all right, for the profits. You do not have to risk that day trading. You can risk less. You can risk 400, 500, you can risk 1,000. But either way, an 82% win ratio is really good results. So we were talking about results. You've got to have more winners than losers. I have trades that lose. Every trader does, but you've got to have more winners. So I have more winners than losers, which is how I can do it consistently and profit month over month, year over year. So let's talk about the basics here. What's a gap? What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. That's it. Again, the U.S. stock market closes every day at 4 o'clock and opens the next day when? At 9.30. From that time period, from 4.01 to about 8 o'clock at night, and then in the morning, very, very early, sometimes as early as 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., stocks are moving. The market is moving. People are putting trades on and taking trades off. That is where the gap is being created, in the post and pre-market, okay? So again... This is something that happens every day. So let's take a look at a chart here. This is Boeing. <laughs> so this is a daily chart. So what happened here with Boeing? I'm gonna go back to November, okay? In fact, I think this is falling today. We had a gap up today in this, and I think this is falling. I don't have today's day on here. I clipped this yesterday. But here was a gap down. So this is a daily chart. Okay, I'm going back here to September. This is Boeing. BA is the ticker symbol. So here's where the stock closed at 4 o'clock in one day. Closed. Open the next day here. So you see where this is. Again, hard to tell the exact number here, but this is approximately around 210. Then it opened the next morning where? Under 200. It was like 198-ish. So from here at 4 o'clock to here at 930, it gapped. Okay, this tail represents a selling movement in the stock. So you could have shorted it. You could have shorted it, got out, boom, and made money to the downside. That is a gap down. What about this one over here? Again, this is before Thanksgiving. Stock closed here, gap down, had a massive sell-off. Closed at 4 o'clock the night before up here, around 225-ish or no, it was above 225, it was around 226, it looks like, and change. Opened down here under 225 and fell. This fell more than $10. So this is momentum. This is selling, okay? And this is how you're gonna make money as a trader. Again, you could have done an option in it, you could have done a put, you could have done a short as an equity trade, which is a trade on margin. And if anybody doesn't understand what margin is, you can ask me that right now too, okay? Now that is a gap down as well. This one and that guy there. Let's talk about, oh, here's another one. Let's talk about this one too before I show you gap ups. This closed here, this gap down. Four o'clock, 9.30, boom, get the drop. Again, momentum to the downside, boom. Could have done a put, could have done a day trade short. You could have even done a swing trade in this. You see where it went, fell all the way down here. Again, this is December going into the holidays. Somebody's asking a question here. Let me see if I can blow it up. Um, do I, the gap happens. Somebody's asking about the hours. The gap happens at night or in the morning. That's what I'm saying. That's when it is being created. It is being made. So here in the chart, <coughs> excuse me, you're seeing it, the close and the open. But trades went off here. You just don't see them here. They went off at night or in the morning, could be both. So over here is a gap up. Closed here, opened higher. So this closed at one price and opened at a higher price. This is a bullish gap, rallied. You could have gone long. Actually, we had a gap up here. This was here closed. This opened up, rallied. You could have done a call. You could have gone long. It moved up for two days, okay? So you can do bullish gaps and you can do bearish gaps. There's examples of both. So what is a gap? Let's look at Apple. 
what is margin? Margin is if you want to take a trade in a stock like Apple, for example. I didn't look at where that's trading right now before the lecture here. The stock might be trading, let's use an example at 180, for example. If you wanted to buy it, you don't need, say you want to buy 1,000 shares of Apple, you don't need $180,000 in your cash account, to, in your trading account, to buy 1,000 shares of Apple if you trade on margin. Margin is something that is given to you by the broker, and you can go to a retail place and get four to one margin. So you would take 180 divided by four, that's the cash you need to take a 1,000 share position of Apple long or short, and if you wanted to go to a prop broker, you could get 10 to 1. So for example, you need 18,000 in cash to take 1,000 shares of Apple at a price of 180 if you're doing a day trade. This is not an option. You don't trade options with margin. It's only the cost of the option, whatever it costs you. But when you day trade, an equity trade, you are trading on margin, which means you're in and out between 9.30 and 4, and you gotta be flat by 4 o'clock. The broker gives you the buying power based on your cash position. Does that make sense? That's what makes it possible for people like regular people to actually trade without hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars, actually. <laughs> so that's, that's really a positive thing, actually. Let's talk about Apple. What does it got? What happened with this guy here? Let's go back. Closed here, gapped up, rallied. You could have gone long here, Apple. Again, this was back before Christmas. What about this over here? This has had a lot of gap ups. Look at them all. This has been strong, very strong. Again, this is probably falling today. I didn't look at it, but I'm sure that it is with everything else. This closed here, gapped up, rallied. Closed here, gapped up, rallied. Closed here, gapped up, rallied. Look at the beautiful move. This was the beginning of December in Apple. Okay. Here's a gap down. So this closed here, this gap down fell. That was back in November. <clears throat> so a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Sometimes they're down, sometimes they're up, okay? Here's Peloton, love the Peloton. This has been falling, falling, falling. We did a million trades in this. They were what? They were shorts. Stock closed here, this is tanked. Look at this, this closed up here. This is back at the beginning of November. This was an earnings gap. Closed up here over 80, open in the morning where? 50, this is terrible, terrible, terrible. This is a big gap down in Peloton. So we shorted this, it worked. And you could have done an option two, which you would have wanted to do a put, which is a short, and it worked, and it fell. Boom. And it's, this is still falling, actually. So this was just yesterday. Look at that. So before the earnings, this was in the 80s. This has lost more than half its value, more than 50% of its value, just in the last month and a half since the earnings. So this is the power, the power of the gap. Okay. Again, how do you make money in the market? You got to go with what's happening in the directional bias. You got to get the direction right. So that's the only way you can make money. If you're going long the market today, you're down. If you shorted the market today, you're up. So you have to think logically. Why do gaps work so well to trade? Why do they work so well? They have big moves. Here was IBM. We did this back in October. Huge move, plus the ones I just showed you before. So big moves. That's how you make money as a trader. So you don't have to take 10,000 shares or something. Again, because you still need cash to do that, whether it's a margin or not. You can get thousands of dollars in profit if you get something that moves five, 10, $20. You know, big moves, that's what you want to do. You also get fast moves and gaps. Quick, we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. In an option, it could be 24 to 48 hours. In a day trade, it could be five, 10, 15 minutes, it could be half an hour. But fast means quick, quick, quick. Because remember, the longer you're in the market, the longer you're in trades, the more you're at risk, even if you're up, but the trade could turn against you. So, you know, <laughs> in this type of environment, which my outlook for 2022, I don't want to get too much into this. I will talk about this today on Shutter. That the whole thing about 2022 is I think it is going to be more volatile than 2021. 2021, really, when you look at the whole year, was a strong year for the market. You could have gone long crap stocks and made money, actually, stocks and downtrends, whatever. You could have gone long a lot of things and made money because the market really just had such a big move up in the year of 2021. I do not think 2022 turns out to be the same thing. And so far, it's not even just two days into the year, quite frankly, or three days into the year. But gaps set up often, and that's the other reason to trade them to you need them to set up often to what? To make money. You can't like have a strategy that only sets up three times a month once a week or something. You need consistent setups to make money. 
So who makes gaps? Who is creating those trades we talked about in the post-market and the pre-market? Institutions, institutional money, hedge funds, big traders, big, big, big money people. They take positions on, they take positions off. They are creating the actual gap. That is why it's so important to read that and see what's happening. Is the buying coming in? Is the selling coming in? Who's in control? Who's in control right now today in a stock like uh, the Peloton? Just because we just talked about Peloton. The bears are in control. Okay. So again, you would want to be short. You would not want to be long. You have to go with the control of the control level because you personally are not going to move a stock. And even my entire trading room, if we take the same position, we're not going to move a stock. It's millions and millions and millions of shares and movement, big positions, big institutional money that moves stocks and moves the market. Now here's something we did when we were talking about options and stuff. We did an option and Tesla is very expensive. It worked, we went long, we did a call. Here is a gap up. So this closed here at 105.678. This was New Year's Eve. And then on Monday morning, the third, it opened at 114.775. We did an option, we did a call. It went to the target, it was 1200. You could have bought it, got in, got out, boom. But this is a gap, it's a gap up, okay? So again, I don't know that this is gonna happen on Friday. I didn't take a trade here Friday, I took a trade here Monday. You understand what I'm saying? So my strategy plays the gap itself on the gap day. I'm not predicting this. This very well could have gone the opposite direction, COVID, whatever else. I wait, wait for the gap. Then I have a system where I rate it to determine is this going to get bought or is this going to get sold off? And in this case here, I rated it. It was a long, we did it, it worked. Somebody's asking about Tesla. Because, because I'm, I'm explaining to you here. How did I know to buy calls in Tesla? One, it gapped up. I got up in the morning, I scanned, I saw it. I said, wait a minute, let me look at this thing right here. Again, this was Monday the 3rd. I have a system, this is my strategy, and I go through 26 points to rate it. If the stock rates 20 points or more per my 26 point system, I take the gap, the stock, the market, whatever I'm looking at, I do ETFs, like the QQQs, the SPY, the diamonds, I do those too, I take it in the direction of the gap. So I'm always going in the direction of the gap, but I'm not always doing every gap up long and I'm not always doing every gap down short. It has to rate per my system 20 points or more per the 26 point system. That is not what we're going to go over today. That is something I teach in a two-day course that takes 16 hours. I'm showing you here just the very, very beginning concept of gaps to understand how these work a little bit, how you can make money playing momentum and direction correctly, how, what a gap is. The system itself, the strategy itself, it's something that I charge for my time and learning this class in the class that if you want to take it, you can email me later and inquire for more information. But you can also come, if you want to try out of the trading room this week, you can email me at melissathestockswitch.com the rest of the week. And we only have Thursday and Friday, but I'm sure we'll get things to do. I'm sure we'll get things to do. And it'll be interesting to see where we open tomorrow. Because remember, we gapped on today. I don't know where we're going to close. We've got two hours left. But we have two hours left today. So again, I'll see where we close when? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. At four o'clock, I'm going to know where we close. And then I'll go to bed tonight and I'll get up in the morning and I'll see, are we gonna gap up, we're gonna gap down. And I'll say this one quick thing here, even though I don't have to mark it up. The, the thing is people love to buy dips, love to buy dips. And people could buy this market here into two o'clock to four o'clock, three o'clock to four o'clock, I don't know. They could buy it even though we fell this morning because people love to buy dips. I do not do that. I do not do that. And if you had $10 million right now, and I'm just throwing this out there, and I'm going to go back to the lecture. If you had $10 million right now, would you buy this market right off the highs? Right off the highs with COVID, this thing, that thing? I, I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? So again, I don't think this is the end of the sell-off here, but we have to wait and see. So I'm looking day by day by day. So again, day by day, get up, boom, rate it. It looks good. It's going to rally, it's gonna get bought more, goes. And I'll tell you right now, this fell yesterday and today, but quite frankly, if the market hadn't fallen off of planning yesterday, if the market hadn't done that, this would have made a new high yesterday. But everything tends to go with the market. So you've gotta read the market right. You've got to, but anyways, here is 
the market. Now, this was from yesterday. Here's a sell-off from yesterday. Okay, and a support. Now, today, we gapped down. We opened here, and then we started falling. Now, this was a trade from 1220. This was a day trade. This is not an option. We shorted it. The entry was 379.45. I'm going to pull up the one minute. We did it in the one minute chart. 1,200 shares was 26.40 risk. Exit was 377.90. Remember we're talking about big moves? Remember we're talking about momentum? This is a good move. This is a big move. A dollar, two dollars, whatever you can squeeze out of it. Profit was 1,860. Now here is the one minute. So here is the gap. This is a one minute chart. Closed here, gap down. This was 1,220. You can pull up your own charts and look at it if you want. Open, drop, rallying, shorted it, got the drop. Here's a sell-off, boom, down, do it. So people were trying to buy this here, and we were short. I got the direction right. This was 12.20. Let me go back to the daily. Here was the 12.20. We closed here. We gapped down. This little taily thing is the trade that we did, and we made money. And you, that doesn't look like much, but it was profit. Okay. 1220, we also shorted the spy. This had a bigger tail. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Okay. Again, this is 1220. We did a short in the spy. Again, you could have done a put in this because it's a little bit pricey. 453.95, 2,000 shares, risk was 2,700. It's an advanced risk. We did an ad because I love this. I'll show you the one minute in a minute. 4,000 shares, 453.75 average price. I mean, look at this move, 451.60. So again, $2, $3, gorgeous move. Size, add, boom. And I also use stops. Okay, so we had the move. Close to your gap down. This is the SPY now. We're on the SPY, 12.20, same day we did the queues. We had two gap downs in the market. We got in, we shorted it. Get the drop, boom. Get the drop, 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 drop. And I love this, so we did the add. And, and it was just a nice trade. So again, I'm in and out of day trades pretty much quickly, usually in the morning. Try to get out of them no later than, you know, lunch. I'm not going to kill something if it's still going. An option I may do and get out the same day if it goes like Tesla. But if something doesn't go the exact day I call it, then I'll, I'll hold it until it goes. Okay. Like we did some options trades today that are out until next Friday. Next Friday. If they don't go today by four, I'm going to stay with the trades, okay? Again, momentum, momentum, okay? So you can day trade gaps or you can do options and gaps. The nice thing about options is you don't need margin. You can open up an options account with $2,000. You are not risking $2,000 in the whole trade. You would risk 100, 400, 500, something like that. But you can open up a cash account with only $2,000. So a lot of people like to do options who don't have the wherewithal or the finances to open up a margin account. So that's that's your choice, that's your decision. It's the same strategy, the same system that I'm doing it. Now, I'm just gonna show you some options trades we did do here. This was falling today. I don't know if this is uh, where this is at right now. This did gap down today with the market. This is a daily chart of Amazon. We did a bunch of trades in this. Somebody's asking a question here, let me look. How do I decide each entry and each day trade for that gap? Well, again, I have to wait, I have to watch it. I have to see the setup. I'm not going into anything in the pre-market. I don't trade the pre-market. I don't trade the parse market. I don't predict the gap itself. This is live trading. And again, if you'd like a if you'd like a trial to the trading room, email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can come tomorrow. I call the trades live. I say, don't take it here. Put the stop. Here's the target. We're in. This is this is live. I have to watch it. I'm not getting in trades at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm 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 doing the analysis. The analysis when I get up, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 o'clock, right up until 9.30, I decide I like this today. I'm doing Amazon today or whatever I'm doing. I don't know where I'm getting in until it opens and trades live. I have to think fast on my feet. But I am calling the trades if you're in the room and you do it when I call it. The easy thing about following me, though, is that I only usually do one thing at a time. Now, that particular day in 1220, we did do two things because the market, there, there was two things. So I knew the market was going to fall, so we did two market trades. You could have done one. Again, we usually do one, but, you know, I don't think it's hard to follow me because of the fact that I usually focus on one thing at a time. If you're interested in a referral for a broker or want to know where 
you could uh, talk to someone, you can email me if you want to know. You don't have to trade where I trade, you can really go anywhere. But if you want a referral, just email me at melissathestockswish.com. I don't have any affiliation with any brokers though, you should know that. So you're not gonna get any special deals even if I refer you to my place. So that's really up to you. I think the interesting thing about trading right now with brokers is years and years ago when I started out 2008, <clears throat> I mean, there were fees. We paid uh, platform fees, we paid commissions, we paid all kinds of fees. Things have changed now. So you may not wanna trade where I'm trading, you may be able to get a better deal someplace else because a lot of places, for, because of competition, because of the way that some of these places have gone together and merged, like Ameritrade bought Charles Schwab, they're not charging fees. But I personally like service, so I'm at a place with service myself. So it's, it's really up to you. Also, I've been using the same charting package since I started trading, <clears throat> which again was 2008. I don't want to change places. But that's just personal preference that has nothing specifically to do with the broker. You have to do what's best for you, what's cost effective, because if you have a small account, $2,000, then you're not going to want to pay a platform fee. It's going to eat up your cash. Okay. So let's look here at the option in Amazon. We did the puts, 12.9 uh, I call this expired 12.17. I'll show you the gap in a minute. This wasn't cheap. But to pay one uh, $35 fee for one contract actually is cheap when you look at the price of Amazon. So you see what I'm saying? You would have never spent $3,500 or $7,000 or whatever to buy or to short this on margin. So let's go back here. Thursday, the 9th, here. So this closed here, this gap down, I called the short, which was a put. This is an options newsletter service. That was the gap. So I called the 3450s. You see where we are, take it to the right. Called it a little bit under the price of the open. And then you see the drop, boom, it was a put. It was a great trade. It was a 300% return on investment, again, just a nice call and very expensive to trade. So we did it as an option. If you wanted to buy one, you still could have made $10,500 risking $3,500. That's, that's a nice trade. You've got to have the cash to do this. You can't take a half a contract, but you know, we do do some of these high flyers. We also did an option in the SPY. Here's the daily in the SPY. This day was the 17th. 460 puts we did expired on 1223. I'll show you the move. This was more reasonable. <coughs> 475. Sold it at 950, 100% return on investment. And then if you did the intermediate trader, you could have made 1450, risking 1450. Let's look at the gap. So December 17th. So how did this work? Why did it work? How did it go? How is this a profitable trade? Because I called it here, fell, boom, dropped into the gap and fell. Do you see? So I called this on this day here when this got down. Then we got in it. Then it continued. This is the move. This is the profit. This is the money. Boom. Okay. That was a nice trade. So again, that was on the 17th. Anyway, returns can be great for gaps. You've got to pick the right one. You've got to pick the right one. It's it's a kind of thing, but of course you can make money doing this. I, it's, it's just a lot of people just tend to, they're all over the place. I, I don't know why. I think everybody wants this magical thing that's they're never going to have a day where they don't lose that's not true i have trades that don't work i just showed you november we had a great month but i still had trades that lost so i mean you you have to have a set risk amount you can't like risk your whole account in one trade or whatever it is and, and you really have to be consistent with what you're doing i have conviction i talk about this a lot i talk about this in my teaching it's very important I have conviction in what the institutional money the buying the selling what's going on who's doing what you gotta remember, day trading isn't investing. That's why I said I don't buy the dip. And and if I had a hundred million dollars or managed a fund, I wouldn't buy this at this placement right now in this market. I would not do it. And I don't think other funds are gonna do it either. So even if we rally today, I don't think it holds. But again, we can look at the market at the end here when I'm done. We're in, we're out. I call it chunking it out. Chunk it. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. So you make 500, 500, 500. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand. That's how you put a week together. That's how you put a month together. That's how you put a year together. Okay, I have to look, like kind of have to just look at it 
Like today, we're doing this. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about the trades you did last year that you lost or whatever you did last year. Think about right now what you're doing. It's the focus. Pick one strategy, one thing that you're focusing on that is so critical. And I do think this is a reason I'm successful because I try to narrow it down. My focus is gaps, okay? Pinpointing like a bullet, trying to hit a bullet right into it. Someone's asking about institution of money. Just curious why I use that illustration of footsteps because it's big, big money, big money, like big footsteps, like a, <laughs> like a bear that goes through the woods or something. It's like a big animal. <laughs> that's why, that's a, that's a funny question, but that's, that's true. I try to use illustrations to, to try to teach what I'm trying to say and visuals because, you know, that helps people learn and understand. I think I do a good job of explaining things, at least in the class and when I'm in the room, but, you know, I do the best I can in 45 minutes here, but gaps really tell you everything you need to know how to train. Sizing is different because the stops are different, but you have to have the risk the same. And again, say you want to make 200, 250 grand a year. Again, break it down, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it. Okay, five grand a week, a thousand a day. That's how you can sometimes wrap your head around what you can do to accomplish your goals or achieve your goals. It's never about getting everything to a piggy target. You know, that Tesla was a good train. It, it did not go to the piggy target. It went to the target. The target was 1,200. That was it. And if you stayed in it too long, you lost if you were a piggy. So you see what I'm saying? It's chunk it. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Tomorrow we'll do another trade. Tomorrow we'll do it. Friday we'll do a different trade. It's every single solitary day. Oh, you're learning a lot today? Okay, good. That's very good. Anyways, focus on volatility. We're seeing that now in the market just at the beginning. And again, financial freedom. You know, I talk about this on TV a lot, mostly the political channels I'm on, not just the market channels. But I'm sure I'll talk about this today on Shutter TV about inflation. Everything is going up. Real estate's going up, gas prices are going up, food's going up. I disagree with Fed Chairman Powell that there is this is a temporary inflation. He said that all year he was wrong. Now he says we're going to be back to normal inflation levels around 2% 12 months from now. I think he's wrong about that too. Why do I think he's wrong about that? For the same reason that we've been in the situation for the last 12 to 18 months. We don't have enough people working. We still have people working from home. We still have people that are home because of COVID, whether they're afraid of COVID or whatever else it is. And we don't have enough people to manufacture the products and services and goods and things that we need to get them around in order to have things be at normal. I talked to a person last night, actually. Um, she runs a construction business or would they go and they do work like, you know, fixer up or things in people's homes and stuff like that. I said, well, you should be busy now. You should be doing great. She said, it takes forever to get copper pipe. The price has gone up. It takes months now to get copper. Everything's going up. We can't get the stuff we need. So they can't do the jobs until they get the supplies. It takes forever to get the supplies. Like my mother ordered furniture over the summer, supposed to come in December. She still doesn't have it. She ordered uh, furniture for the family room. Still doesn't have it. And again, everybody wants to be paid up front now before they even place the order for the furniture or whatever. It's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. That is why costs are up. And that's not going to go back to normal till people are back at work. So the economy is going to be in a situation where prices are higher because of this situation until people go back to work. So it, it is a problem. And I don't know how we're going to get out of it, really. I really, I really don't. I, uh, minimum volume, I typically want to see things that are companies you would know. Apple, Peloton, we talked about in Boeing. I'm not going to trade low fluke stocks under a dollar. I want a couple million shares. I mean, I don't want a little dinky rinker dinker. So it's just companies that you know, and they've got to trade, they've got to move, they've got to have millions of shares in them. I don't have a set amount where I won't do anything under a set amount, but it's like, it's I'm not gonna do penny stocks. I'm not gonna do something that costs a buck. And those stocks don't have the volume. And if they have the volume, it's like one day in a month or something. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you can do this if you learn what to do. And if you follow someone that knows what they're doing, it's not a fairy tale. You've got to be realistic, though. What do I mean? It could take you time to learn what I know. You might learn it in a weekend during the class, or it might take a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You may not understand everything right away. So you may have questions. You may have to start out with a small account. Everybody wants to say, oh, I want to start out with a big account and take the Amazons. 
If you have $10,000, then that's it. If you have 5,000, that's it. Be realistic. Set goals for yourself so that you can get somewhere. So if you are still in your head like, oh my God, this is crazy. It's not crazy. People are doing very well with me. I, I've had a business now for 10 years. 2012, I started the business. It's 2022. I can't believe it's 2022, by the way. But anyways, you can do this, but you have to be realistic. But that's not bad. You're going to get to your goal farther and faster and feel a lot better about yourself if you're more realistic. Because if you're living in fantasy world, uh, that you're going to make all the money you've lost in the past trading in one day or one week or one trade or something like that or risk your whole account. Or, like, that's what people are thinking about that GME stock. I know, like... If you, if you think that somebody's going to make you rich, like, look at a split, like it's like gambling or something. It's you, This isn't for you. Be realistic. Know that there's an investment. You have to pay for my class. You have to put in the time. You have to ask questions. You have to get up in the morning early. I'm up every morning by 6 a.m. I'm looking at the market. You have to open a trading account. You have to set up the platform. You got to learn the charts. Does it mean it has to take you forever? No, but there is a commitment level. So that's the reality. There's a difference between fairy tales and achieving goals. And of course, everyone talks about January. Everybody has, you know, everybody goes on a diet and everybody has exercise goals and everything like that. You can call it a New Year's resolution. You can call it a goal. I, pref I think goals are a better word for it because you say New Year's resolution, then you feel bad if you don't do it. Say a goal. Okay, you say by February 1st, you know, I want to be doing this or whatever. I want to have a trading account. I want to be trading gaps. I want to make this much money a day. <laughs> you know, be normal with setting your goals. Someone asked a question here. Let me go back. What's the minimum maximum percent gap mode? I actually do not look at the gaps based on percentage. So that is not a factor for me. I will do gaps that are all over the place. We talked about someone earlier, uh, some earlier. I will do little ones. I will do big ones. I don't have a minimum or a maximum, to be honest with you, because I look at many, many things in the chart, not just the size of it or the percentage. So anything's, anything's game for me as far as that goes with the gap move. Risking money may be hard, but everything has a cost. Again, your dreams are achievable with time, money, and work. You can do it, and it becomes easier over time. Because the better you get, the, the, the more money you're going to make, and then the better you're going to do, and then your confidence is increased. But again, you have to think of it as a long-term process, not that it's going to take you forever, but that you're chunking it out, and you build up your account over time. I think the, the time and effort to trade is worthwhile right now because of the economy. Even if you're working from home, even if you have another job, even if you're doing something else full time, you can make extra money on the side, even if you still want to keep your job trading. And if you want to do this full time, it's a nice income. And the better you get, the more money you have, the more you can risk over time and do some of these bigger trades. But it's a short time each day, which is a positive thing. Now, what do I teach in the class? It's a 26 point checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks that have number one. A high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Two, a big move on the day. Three, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. Precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So that's what I'm looking for. Again, it's about chunking it out. If you come to me and take my class, you will learn a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. Purpose of this system is to find which gap to help you trade each day using the checklist. This is all I use. Nothing else. I don't even look at fundamentals, to be honest with you. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. The next class is in a couple of weeks, the end of the month, January 29th and 30th. If you have time to think about it, if you want to do it, class is online. Class tuition is $69.99. You must email me for sign-up forms. And again, it's online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Remember, education is a gift to yourself. It's an investment in yourself. Like anything else you would want to do, like if you want to lose weight and you want to buy a Peloton, it's an investment. I bought, a, um, I bought one of those red lights last year. It was expensive great investment and in fact i'm thinking about buying another one now because they're doing a sale they're doing a new year sale um it's one of those uh ultraviolet lights i've been putting on my face my skin looks amazing i have to do it every day for 10 minutes but like my skin looks fabulous doing it it was like the best investment i ever made i spent a thousand dollars on this, this this light but you gotta do it every day for 10 minutes everything that you want to like do something to help yourself whether it's your finances whether it's your health whether it's your mental state, your emotional state, 
you know, we, we really have to take care of ourselves right now. Look at what's happening in the world. Like, it's, it's just, if you don't take care of yourself right now, I mean, you can really get sucked into some terrible negativity because the world is crazy. It's just crazy right now. And I don't know when it's going to get any better. Anyways, if you want to sign up for the options newsletter, this is $69.99 a year. I do have a half year annual subscription, which is $49.99 for six months. If you're interested in that, email me. And one quick special I'm offering everybody here today, and this is only through uh, Friday because I'm doing this for the New Year's Eve. If you want to sign up, you have to sign up by Friday, but you want to do a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. Deadline is Friday. You get the trading room free for one year with the class, but you have to sign up and pay by Friday. You do the class at the end of the month. And then the options newsletter special for the New Year's Eve sale is $59.99. You'd save a thousand and you can sign up for that too. And you get the gap options course free. Um, let me just see here. Something about subscribers can open an account with the signals being executed. Well, you get the, the, the options newsletters are sent to your email. You have to be able to open your email. So I don't know what you mean by that. If you don't have access to your email or to your trading account to place the trades, I don't know how you're going to place them. Now, most of the options trades are sent in the morning. Now, I just want to quick look at what's going on right here quickly. Can everybody see the chart? I know I only have one more minute. Let's just quick look at this market right here. Oh, I call I call puts in the queues. It's worth they're working. Wow. We did this today. We did this. And we did this. Everything's working. Wow. Okay. Any quick questions? If not, I'm going to make myself look beautiful for cheddar at four o'clock. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Dan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There's a few questions here for you. Oh, okay. And I'm going to suggest everybody who has a question, you take advantage, email Melissa, ask the question. Um, oh, somebody said what you do is incredible, amazing trading from oh, Harry. Thank you. And uh, Tam, I'm not even going to try to say your whole name. Do you have an understanding with your broker where your subscribers can open an account with the signals being executed on the account by the broker on behalf of a full-time worker? No, I do Did not. You? I do not. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You okay. have to be able to. You have to okay. be able to do the trade yourself. You have to be able to place the trade. That's that's why you want to join and talk to Melissa. And um, Chris wants to know what's the min slash max percent gap move for average trades. I don't have any minimum or maximum. I look at everything differently. I'll do baby ones. I'll do big ones. I look at a lot. I look at 26 things. So that's that's not something that I really have an answer for because it's not like that okay. easy. All right. Well, that is uh, that's everything else. I think people have to send you an email about. Thank you. And uh, I see Norma said this is a very dynamic presentation. I'm learning a lot. This is fantastic. And um, Norma, make sure you email her. And also, uh, David, we are recording this. Uh, you'll get an email from GoToWebinar uh, about it so that you can see it right away. And then we also download it, put it on our YouTube channel, and we let you know that it is there uh, at tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived underscore webinars. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. Melissa. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks I do. Thanks for having um, me, Sherry. Thank and you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it again. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.